This is Baikal, the planet's biggest lake. Ust Barguzin is a village on its eastern side. It was founded in the 17th century by the Cossack Gavrilo Lavtsov. The founder's name means catcher in Russian, which seems to have influenced the village's fate. The locals have been fishing for more than 300 years. Dozens of teams of fishermen catch Omo, the local fish. Baikal is like a sea to them, and the northeastern wind, Barguzin, is the sea wind. Baikal is known for its harsh disposition, so every time they put to sea, the fishermen don't know how big their catch will be. They don't even know if they'll make it home alive. The whole village survives by fishing. If the fishermen catch nothing, we get nothing and stay home. Tatiana Popova smokes and dries fish in her kitchen garden using fur cones. She says the local omo contains more fat. That's why it's more highly valued. We all survive by fishing in the village. And if the fishermen have had a good catch, we're all right and have work to do. We salt it and smoke dry it and put it in the freezer. The most in-demand fish is smoke-dried because you can store it for a long time. And smoke-cured fish, you can have it for two days maximum. They buy smoke-dried fish and take it to Israel, Moscow, Germany and England, anywhere basically. Omo is the most stable currency here. You can sell it to tourists or exchange it for something or pay for something with one fish or a box of them. Hmm, it smells not bad. It's fresh. How much? One for a hundred rubles. One for a hundred rubles. I'll take one with potatoes. Vladimir Pfeiffer and his team couldn't start work for three days in a row. Wind and impressive waves didn't let them. Sometimes storms on Baikal last for weeks. You can't get used to them. You can only suffer through them. Every idle day is lost time for a fisherman. However, this morning is calm and sunny. So fishermen are in a hurry. Every second the weather can get worse. Waves will fling the boat like a little toy. If the boat is overthrown, fishermen won't stand a chance. Because when you're at sea, water will flow over. There's a dangerous place there. There's a current there. So the wave lifts your boat. Sometimes when you're not finished, you can see it coming from sea. It means danger. We have no luck, as the trailer's engine is out of order at the last moment. The drive belt got torn apart. The only motorboat we had is out of order. It had to tow the other ones. To row for 30 kilometers is suicide. The foreman is nervous. He will have to spend one more day ashore. We don't have our catch if we miss a day. Fish will get caught in traps, but we won't get any of them. Fish die in traps if they stay there for a long time. It's a guess how many fish are in the traps and if they are even alive. The fishermen hurry 
They fix the engine using a car belt. Finally, they are out to sea. No, I won't be calm today. It's normal. Tomorrow the weather is going to be stable. The boats form a caravan. The head boat is the one with the engine. It tows the other boats like a locomotive. If Baikal is in a good mood, they'll come back with a catch. The fishermen look at the sky and listen. Baikal is a very unpredictable entity with a severe temper. The mountains surrounding it contribute to the movement of the air mass, which creates very strong winds. That's why every calm moment is precious for us. Pfeiffer's team is the luckiest in the village. Many fishermen would like to work here. The team has a lot of work to do. It has two, not one, stationary nets. These nets catch big flocks of migrating fish, moving up from the bottoms of Baikal, ready to spawn. These fish are going to the north of Baikal to spawn. That is, they are going towards the shore, then along the shore, then they bump into the wall that we put up there. They go along this wall and then they end up in our uh, trap. The nets are far apart from each other. Before it gets dark, weather permitting, the fishermen need to get their catch. The work is very fast and exhausting and requires that they work all day long. Two nets mean three, four times more work. Something can fall apart here or tear apart there, and we have no choice but to fix it. The fishing season is almost over, so it's the last time for the summer. The fishermen pull the trap out. It is being pulled easily, too easily. We understand there's no fish there. Graylings, no fish. Well, kiss it and let it go. The mood is getting worse, but it's not too late. We still have chances to come back with a catch. Pfeiffer is going to the second stationary net. It's the same there. Storms damage the net, and we need to call a big motorboat to fix it. We understand we're losing precious time, but there's no other way. No success. Sasha, you better push it a little. Yep, a bit to the back. The fishermen are in a hurry. As the fishing season is approaching its end, they need to fix the nets for a day. Otherwise, they'll hardly get the fish. Looking at the calm water, you couldn't believe Baikal is capable of drowning in the fishermen boats. However, Baikal waves are worse than salty sea waves. Sergei Kavalov, who worked in the Ochat Sea, says, I met people who worked here and in the Navy before. Baikal is a scary place. Fresh water is much worse than salty. It usually is very smooth and calm, but when it suddenly flows over you, it's a scary thing. You should always be ready for constant changes of winds. You're lucky if you have comrades. It's important here on Baikal. Fishermen sometimes quarrel, but they have a rule to leave all quarrels on shore. Baikal 
In our job, it's important to have a partner you trust so you won't have to look back. I mean, this is team spirit. Well, sometimes we have our bad days and quarrels. It happens, but we still have this togetherness. We are a family and we look after each other. It's always like that in the team. Everybody shares joy when getting a catch and disappointment when there's no catch. Hi, Sanich. Hi, Vasilich. Hi, Sanich. Hey, you all right? Not bad. Let's take a look, all right? Sure. <laughs> Let's go. Fishermen simply don't have time to make lift nets or fix stationary nets. So it's the chance for the elderly to make money and share their experience. Sanich no longer fishes, but there are no former fishermen. I used to work in a team, but then I had to quit and earn money like that. And as a watchman in a drugstore, well, I've worked at sea almost all my life. There are a lot of fishermen teams in the village. The elderly have a lot of work to do. As they say here, while there's Omo on the lake, there will always be work for the people. Vladimir Pfeiffer has two daughters, Lyra and Uliana. They asked their father to take them with him, but he can't do it yet. Got it. Yeah. Yes, my girl. What have you been up to? Nothing. What were you doing today? I went to training. Training? Yeah. Everything is possible at sea. It is dangerous even when it's calm. My call is not and will never be tamed by man. Here, even the bravest person will worry. Not for themselves, but for the others. Once we caught fish and got into a storm, there are guys with us, and I see them going away the guys are they're young 18 to 20 years i start thinking if they come back alive i'll kiss every one of them and forget everything every quarrel because i'm responsible for them and how will i look in their mother's eyes a fisherman's family gathers not very often and not for a long time all chores, however hard, are entitled to women. While the husband is at sea, a wife needs to do everything on her own. All the village's wives are like that. Of course she does everything. She fires the furnace, she carries water. Once an elderly lady lived here, so she carried water and wood for her too. Sometimes I used to leave her firewood to uh, split. Well, if you don't respect the choices of your husband, then who can guarantee he'll support you when you need it? I mean, I have a type of job where I need to work on the weekend, when everyone's home, laying on the couch, watching TV on Saturday and Sunday. When I get up, my children are waiting to go to training, and he wouldn't just say, where are you going? Stay home. Vladimir Kreptov is the foreman's assistant and friend. He's one of the most experienced fishermen in the team. His father and grandfather have worked on Baikal too. That's my father, who spent all his life at sea. He was a fisherman, my deceased father, God bless. He was born in 1930 and he was eight years old when he started fishing. 
It was in the Chivirkusk Bay. As a boy, Vladimir used to hide in his father's motorbike when he went fishing. He wanted to go with his father so badly. However, he would like to choose another occupation for his son. I don't know. It's his business. I'd like, uh, of course, him to sit in some office and get an education. But if he chooses to be a fisherman, then we'll work together. The only thing the fisherman regrets about is not spending enough time with his family. He's got big catches. He's been in violent storms, but he didn't see his son take his first step. Didn't take him to school. Wasn't around when his boy needed advice. Once he missed his father too. It's a usual thing for fishermen's children. Now his son is not a frequent guest at home. He grew up and went to Ulan Ude to study. Sure. My job didn't let me see my son as a child. I dedicated too little attention to him. Sometimes he misbehaved and I needed to be around to give advice or maybe spank him. But the mother did all the bringing up. When home, Vladimir is trying to do the most difficult chores. He splits wood, and his wife Olga is cutting her client's hair. They opened a little hairdresser in their house. Olga, unlike Vladimir, likes to spend time at home. First, she couldn't put up with him being far at sea, but then she learned to. Well, it was like that. First, I tried to say, either you change your job or... Or you leave? You leave. Well, he tried. He changed the job, but it still didn't work out. But I got used to it. No offense now. Of course, I feel lonely, but you know, it's still his job. He can't live without it. He doesn't stand in the way of my job, after all. Olga still wants her husband to change his occupation. Because he's not young anymore. It's always windy and cold at sea. Every time he fishes, he tests his health. Especially in winter. He often catches cold. His hands get cracked from the harsh conditions too. On his back, I need to massage it a lot. When at sea, fishermen daydream of the shoreline, but they always want to be near water. Fishermen's wives are jealous, but they understand they won't manage to take fishing away from their lives because it'll make them the unhappiest men on earth. I'm a bit jealous of the sea. Sometimes, when I want to take the whole family to the sea, he comes back home and he says, I saw it all, and he's tired. Of course, in this case, I feel jealous and envy that he was there in the Baikal and we were just sitting at home and he doesn't want to go with us. At home, fishermen want to live in comfort and care, sleep in a warm bed, eat good food. Vladimir's favorite dish is omul pie. Of course, they don't bake pies at sea, though every fisherman knows a hundred recipes of cooking omul. A foreman is like a top dog. He's stronger and more decisive than others. He's like an Olympic team captain, always around to give advice and find words. It's no wonder that sports are a necessary part of Vladimir's family life. If it weren't for sport, it would be hard for me to become a leader in this field or just survive all this hardship. Sometimes you get to have physical exertion and moral pressure too. So you only have to clench your teeth to go through it and, and stay alive. Vladimir's wife, Natalia, is a children trainer. She's creating the cult of healthy lifestyle in the family. Pfeiffer, being an old soul, started skiing. 
The whole family goes skiing at the school stadium when they have free time. One needs to relax after hard work at sea. In such cases, the head of the family prefers skis to alcohol. It's much more pleasant to have fun with your family, exercising physically, feeling tired. I can feel connection to each member of my family. I come practically to every competition they're in. Lyra started skiing too. I'm a hardcore fan of every competition she's in. Pfeiffer advocates healthy living among the team's members. Some fishermen quit drinking and sent their children to Natalia. Children get used to sports and fishing from the cradle. Since they get physical exercise there, we use their help to shake these bags or pack fish. It's not even hard for them. They're prepared for this. So it's good and fun. Vladimir Pfeiffer's team is ashore for the third day in a row. They have to wait for the wind to get fixed. If you take the sea, you'll put on hold a fisherman's life. Waiting is exhausting. They're not used to sitting at home for long periods of time. Everybody understands they won't catch fish and earn money in the nearest time. During the forced downtime, the fishermen try to fix an old boat's engine and wait for the command of the foreman. It's the third day, Petrovich. Yes, it keeps blowing, and we have nothing to do with it. Fish are dying. Yeah, I know. But you can see it with your own eyes. We're feeding seagulls again. But I, uh... I suggest we leave. Maybe. What do you think? Maybe we should wait for the foreman's opinion. Let's have a sleep on it. Maybe we'll get wind from the Angara. At dawn, Vladimir Pfeiffer is trying to leave land again. The weather is good, and they're going to see at last after the downtime. The children are still sleeping. The daughters will hug their pop only a few days later. All this time, the team will live far away from home in a fisherman's camp on the shore of Baikal Lake. You ready? Yeah. Going back to sea? Bye, baby. Bye. All right, take it easy. Bye. A brief goodbye before another journey. For the next few days, they will only be able to get in touch by phone. The boat is leaking. It is happening right now, when the weather has improved. Instead of fishing, the team has to fix it. The fishermen are finally in the camp. There is much work to do. They have to start fixing boats. So-called Baikal boats haven't changed over centuries. This technology has been used probably since the Cossacks and Yermak. These boats have been existing since the time when Russians came here. This is effective in the first place because it's wood and it, it doesn't sink. Even if the vessel is full of water, it remains buoyant. The boat's bottom and every sideboard need to be treated with resin. 
Melted cedar resin gets in all the holes and cracks. It seals the boards and makes the boat leak-proof. Yeah, if you're in a storm, the boat kind of recoils from the wave, like a seagull. If you have seen a seagull sitting on waves, the boat does the same. The fisherman camp is their summer home, 30 kilometers away from their village. Pfeiffer's team spend most of the year here. It takes a long time to build a team, and it takes a long time for fishermen to get used to one another before becoming a family. Not all novices pass tests to stay in the Artol. When someone new comes, you know him in the village, but here we live like a family. And here, people show their true selves. Someone tries to skimp work or something. Someone else works very hard. It's getting harder now to find young people. The profession is losing its status. The youth wants to go to the town. Experienced fishermen say they understand it. Earnings are not the highest here, and working conditions are hard. During the fishing season, you have to live away from home, eat what you call it, and sleep on a plank bed. Not everybody would like it. It's not even a habit, it's a lifestyle. When you sit at home, on a couch, you feel you need something different. Here, like they say, the harder the plank bed, the harder your bones. As children, we got used to this. And we passed this habit from generation to generation. In the evening, nobody in the camp is idle. Someone scales fish, someone peels potatoes, someone starts a fire. Fish soup and rožnik are for dinner today. It's all fast and simple. That's our traditional dish, Baikal rožnik. You need thalis to cook it. Yeah, and you need to eat the end too. If you leave it, they say you'll get no fish, no fish. How horrible would that be? All the science and superstitions of the fishermen prove that Baikal is a living creature. It's sometimes called master or father. Sometimes fishermen coax by call throwing sweets or pouring vodka to the lake. In the same old way, they trust in anything, God and devil. When a person drowns, I mean a fisherman, the last thing he sees are those mermaids. Those who saw them are not found in Baikal. The master takes his body. People from Baikal trust folk belief in signs not less than their own hands and eyes. These signs will always tell if tomorrow is a good day to go fishing. We have a proverb. If the sky is red in the evening, there's nothing to be afraid of. If it's red in the morning, fish will not be good. It means it will be windy. When clouds are tattered, we say the same. It's the way it is. If you live by the sea for a long time, you can see it. Severe men of Baikal spend here more time than at home. Not any person can stand it. Some fishermen start feeling homesick. The foreman was once trying to find something else besides fishing. One time, he even started a little woodworking business. But the sea didn't let him go. This feeling you get in extreme conditions. When I come back, I can feel that it gives me some advantage. In big cities, for example, I feel I'm stronger than other people because I can live in their conditions and they can't in mine.
The whole team is sitting by the fire in the evening. They have discussed plans for tomorrow and are recalling things of the past, telling stories. Sometimes you can hear songs. The foreman is the one who plays. Listening to music, everybody thinks of their relatives, wives who sent their children to sleep, elderly parents who can't stop worrying about their sons. Poems come after songs to tell about the family and relatives. We used to be friends as children. And now we have grown apart. My mother is ill. And I sent a message. Children, let's gather together. Our mom is ill. Younger fishermen don't know this feeling of yearning yet. Many of them don't have a family and kids yet. Some of the team's veterans have divorced many times. But everybody misses the shore, no matter who waits for them. A fisherman, however, is full of contradictions. Once ashore, he will want to get back to the sea. There's nothing you can do about it. At sea, you want to go home, and you can stay home for two or three days. You can't explain it. Of course, if you're at sea for a long time, you start missing your uh, family and kids. The get-together is over. Voices are getting quieter. The fire is dying out. It's calm. Baikal is sleeping before a busy day. At dawn, we can hear the foreman's voice. He, as usual, gets up before the others. Hit the deck! Come on, guys. The Omal's going to leave. Morning procedures are brief. They wash themselves with cold Baikal water. Then they have a cup of hot tea from the kettle and then go fishing. The fishermen hope the weather will not be capricious today and Baikal will have mercy at last to break the unlucky streak of bad weather. The foreman has to work for two people this year. The competition in the fishing trade is high on Baikal. You need to deliver more fish than others to compete with others. Procession companies only work with reliable and big suppliers. We decided to risk this year because we're working with a, a new company. The company we were working for was sold to another one. And this year we had to show our level here and there to the old company and to the new one. Fishermen open the trap. After the storm and a three-day downtime, there's a lot of dead fish, but there's also live fish. It's not a big catch, but still something. Oh, it's not much, but still something. But the thing is, one haul says a lot about a fisherman. You can have one or two hauls, but it has to be a lot. It's better than many small catches.
there are a lot of inexperienced fishermen on the team. The foreman spends time with all of them. You either learn or go back home. Don't cut it like this next time. Get the fish to the trap. This boat. Come on. Hold it aside. You don't argue here. It's natural selection. Only the strongest survive. No democracy. The foreman is an authority beyond exception. His word is law. He controls everything with discipline. That's why the work here is smooth and fast. You have no time to coddle here when a boat is about to smash your face. You need to shout out loud to survive. Fishermen lift a trap with maybe several hundred kilos of fish. Even in July, water in Baikal is cold. The heavy wet net cuts their fingers, but here they don't pay attention to pain. Patience is the most important virtue for a fisherman. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I see we need to get it to the big boat, folks. Fishermen use handmade lift nets to rake out fish from the water. We have a good catch here. Fishery inspection controls the catch. Here's an inspection boat. The foreman and his assistant Vladimir Kreptov compare figures, how much fish they caught and how much they delivered. That's it. Yep, 3,800 is the catch as of the 20th. One doesn't exceed the catch limit. That is poaching. Everybody knows one another here. Poaching can set you back a job in the future. It's not only about fines and canceling a license. It's about fish, Baikal's treasure, that fishermen care most about. We're not trying to get the biggest catch. Today we understand that we have to take just the necessary amount and leave something for the next season in order to be able to fish like our, our ancestors did long ago. These unwritten laws are sacred for people around here. Traditions are kept on the shores of Baikal Lake. That's why the older fishermen are respected here. One of the most experienced fishermen in the village is Uncle Kolya. Here you are, then you need to take it from here, otherwise it won't dry. So, you take it like this. He shares his experience lavishly. He's afraid that his craft will disappear after he dies, because handmade lift nets are much better than new plastic or metal ones. They're tested with time. Like that? If you bend it, you need to mark it here like that. Why? Making a lift net is not simple. You need to pick a right willow branch, clear it out, bend in a certain way, get it dry, and not break it. You guys learn while your old men are alive. Otherwise, nobody will be able to do it. Once we had Valodia Korgin who made all this stuff. But after he died, nobody could do it. That's it. I've been doing this for a long time. I can do 10 or 15 nets. In summer, everybody comes over and begs for a lift net from me. Good. Every skillful fisherman has these nets. Old people grumble that younger fishermen don't care much about nets because you can always buy a new one. In the old times, they had to fix nets with their own hands. These people are like that, so careless. We, the old, used to have one net for five or six years. Today, they can break it and throw it away. 
What is you see? What? Just like that. Pfeiffer's fishermen rake out fish using these lift nets handmade by Uncle Colia. They work fast, changing one another. One person won't do such a job. The foreman is in as well. All right, give me the net. Did you miss it? Yeah, you bet. When the boat is full, they start cleaning the trap. Not the most pleasant thing to do. You have to take each dead fish with your hands, but it's a hell of a feast for seagulls hovering around. When the catch is loaded in the boats, the team goes back to the village. The road home is not sure, but they don't hurry because the weather permits it. Fishermen know that their families hope they'll return with a catch, but during storms, they happen to come back empty handed. Home folks are waiting for them ashore fish is reloaded to wooden boxes. The lorry takes it to a fish processing factory. A part of the catch is given to friends. Choose something big, Volodya. All right. Uncle Kolya always gets Omo as a sign of respect. He taught many of those who are on the team now. Here you go, Uncle Kolya. Come on, let's get it to my car. Where? Here's the Neva. Put uh, right next to it. Local boys help the fishermen unload the catch and wash the boats. Children get used to fishery here from the cradle. They'll sell several smoked fish to tourists and earn their pocket money. Severe fishermen were kids too. We used to come here, as kids, we used to meet fishermen and wash their boats. Sometimes we caught hell, right? Those foremen, they were hard men. They had no time to be gentle with us. They didn't see their own children. That's how we live now. The difference is that it was even harder then. The times were different. Work was in the first place. These guys are a bit older, so they come help us. They don't go to see every day, but they work for hire. So they've worked for a day. And we pay them with fish. And they're quite happy with this. The load is almost finished, and the foreman is on his way home. His wife has always takes him. No other person but fishermen can experience this joy of ashore meetings. Hey. Hey. How are you? It's all right. Being a fisherman's wife is not simple, waiting for him night and day for years, imagining him among cold waves. When Natalia meets her husband, she prepares for the next separation. She knows that he'll miss the sea again. Olga Kreptova has finally talked her husband into going to Baikal to spend some time together. Now, when there's less work, the fishermen can finally swim there. How's it going? Great. Water's great. Oh, 
I live near Baikal. But I'm so busy working that I have no time to swim. Thanks to my wife, I did today. The Kreptovs enjoy their rare hours together. Sitting here, just the two of them looking at the water is not what they often do. Maybe because we don't do it often, we get a stronger feeling because these minutes become more precious, right? It's the way it is. The less you want to leave home, the more you're eager to go back to work on the sea. But Pfeiffer can't sit within four walls for long. His soul demands adventures in the sound of waves. This time, however, he's accompanied not by the team, but by his family. He promised his daughters a real fishing trip on Baikal. All present, in a boat in mid-Baikal, surrounded by his folks, doing his favorite thing. This must be real happiness for the severe foreman of a fisherman team. Here you go, darling. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here you are. Good girl. When you grow up, girls, Papa will dismiss his team and will work with his family. And we'll do it all together. From olden times, people who live on the shores of this lake don't want to change their life. It's hard to live by the sea. Fishermen know the worth of hard labor, but they can't live without the sea, without risk, without the joy of ashore meetings. They can't. Someone leaves the village in search of a better life, but they, descended from families of fishermen, stay here in this severe country.